So financial markets are another market which are both important for macroeconomics, like the labor market, and which exhibit uh, behavior which is not always in equilibrium. And because it's not always in equilibrium, it can have pretty uh, wide-ranging effects for the economy. So when we're talking about financial markets, we're talking about things like stocks. Uh, remember, if you own a stock in a company, then you own a piece of that company, even if it's a really small piece. Uh, bonds, which are really like just a loan to the company. Um, and bonds, of course, can be corporate bonds. They can be loans to government, federal government, state government, local government. Um, and most of these uh, financial products are sold in what's called a continuous double auction, where people who want to buy uh, the financial uh, instrument uh, list the prices which they're willing to pay and how much they want to buy, and people who want to sell the financial instrument list the price and how much they want to sell, and as soon as there's some overlap, those um, sales go through. So prices can go up and down for a lot of reasons, right? So and when we're talking about stocks, which is what we're going to focus on today, then when you're the owner of a firm, you get uh, what are called dividends, right? Uh, and dividends come out of profits. And so if you think a firm is going to be more profitable in the future, you're going to be willing to pay more for the stock now. On the other hand, if you think uh, the firm is going to be less profitable in the future and will therefore pay back fewer dividends, you're going to pay less for the stock now. So those are the economic fundamentals, right? Those are sort of the, the rational theory of how much a stock is worth. On the other hand, a lot of people buy stocks uh, not for long-term investment purposes, but for short-term purposes. And they're doing that because they think the price of the stock is going to rise, assuming they're buying it long or they think the price is going to fall if they're selling it short. Um, and so now it's not so much about how profitable the company is, but how you think everybody else thinks about the company. And so we're going to talk about some of those differences. So because there is so much price fluctuation, there are a lot of opportunities for rent seeking. And so there's a lot of money that's devoted in a modern industrial economy to uh, capturing those rents, right? Which is why retail investors, people like you and me, often don't have uh, any hope of beating the market on a regular basis because people are focused on the market full time as their professional job and they have a lot of incentive to get those prices right. So let's think about the demand curve and the supply curve for a share of a particular uh, stock. So at equilibrium, we can say, oh, okay, well, demand is going to be equal to supply. It's, if it's a very liquid uh, market, meaning that there's a lot of buyers and sellers, then we would expect demand and supply to equilibrate. And in this case, we get a share price of $16.50 uh, and 6,000 shares traded per hour. Now, if there is uh, new information, right, the firm just invented a new product, one of its competitors went out of business, then the demand curve will shift to the right. We'll get an increase in demand. Uh, in that case, we would expect the price to go up. If that's the case, then more people, uh, if more people supply, if the firm decides to supply more shares, then the price goes up not uh, from A to uh, this unlabeled part here with the old supply curve, but to B. And so the price per share increases from $16.50 to $16.65, and the volume of shares traded per hour in this case goes from six to 7,000. So on an everyday basis, stocks are moving up and down, right? They don't move usually a whole lot in any given day. And usually they move because of changes in uh, how the market views profitability. But not always, right? Sometimes there are what we call price bubbles, meaning that the price of a stock, the price of a house, the price of tulip bulbs, the price of something, has gone up way above its fundamental value, right? Whatever that fundamental value is. In the case of a share of stock, we would expect its fundamental value to be something related to the amount of dividends that will be paid out in the future. 
So in this case, what usually happens is we get this increase in demand and the reason that it doesn't come back down is that people view uh, an increase in the price as a signal about what's going to happen in the future. Right? And we get into this positive feedback loop where the price goes up and up and up, except eventually it won't keep going up because pe there won't be any more people to buy. And once it starts to go down, people realize, okay, well, this bubble is over. They realize what the fundamental value is. Everybody tries to sell at once and the price crashes. And because the stock market is so liquid, that price crash can happen you know, very, very quickly. Right? We've seen that a number of times um, in the stock market, going back to the Great Depression. Uh, there was this big stock market crash in 1987, and then there was the dot-com bust in uh, 2000. So these stock market bubbles and crashes are uh, pretty common, actually. So let's think about what might happen in a fictional company called FCC. So we've got our demand curve and our supply curve trading at $50 a share. Uh, and as demand increases, right, we move up to $60 a share and then $70 a share. Now, why would people keep buying, right? Sometimes what happens is people will start shorting the stock, uh, meaning they expect the price to go down, so they borrow uh, shares in order to sell them and then they're going to buy them back when the share price goes down in order to make a profit. But sometimes uh, stocks seem to get a certain momentum and people start saying, oh, this stock is going up and up and up. I need to buy while it's still going up in order to make a profit. And so in this case, we see that the demand curve increases again to $80, right? And so now here's the question. Is it going to keep going up or is it going to fall back down? Well, Oftentimes what happens is that we get good news about future profit, the demand goes up, uh, but there are enough people that believe it's risen above its fundamental value that they are selling or they're short selling and the price falls back down. That's how the market is kind of supposed to work. Sometimes, however, when that demand increases and the price goes up, that people take that as a signal that it's going to keep going up and keep going up. And as a result, it rises farther and farther and farther until you can't even believe it's gotten that high. And that's certainly what happened to tech stocks in the 1990s. It's what happened to housing between 2000 and 2006. It's what happened to tulips in the Netherlands back in the 17th century, uh, is that people just decided, hey, these prices are going to keep going up. I need to buy now so that I can profit from this. Uh, but of course, eventually, it falls back down. So what happens when it falls back down? Well, here we are at $80. All of a sudden, demand falls, supply falls, and we get a big drop in the price. And as I said, especially in the stock market, that can happen uh, almost overnight. Um, in the housing market, on the other hand, it took a long time because housing takes a long time to uh, sell. And so the collapse in the housing bubble took actually a number of years uh, to fully uh, deflate. 